make sure the mast stabilizing lines are attached. The tail goes to the front. The lines are on the outside of the shrouds. Clear all the bungee cords and anything holding everything above the point that you could reach when the mast is up. Be sure the lines, the halyards, and cables are on top of the roller. Make sure the furler is on top of the roller. And make sure the backstay and the topping lift are clear so the mast can be rolled backwards. At this point, the gin pole is strapped to the mast, so we're removing the bungee cords and letting the line down so that the gin pole can be set up. Now we're going to put the mast onto the mast step, locking it in with the pin. We've got to make sure that our stabilizing lines aren't too tight and that they're clear. Now we install the pivot pin for the mast. Now we're going to install the gin pole and we're going to use the front pivot pin for the mast. This will attach the gin pole to the mast and will prevent us from accidentally leaving the front pin in the mast. Forget to remove all the bungee cords that are out of reach, like I did. We want to make sure that the halyard is able to run free. That's the jib halyard, and that's going to be uh, used on our gin pole for the raising system. Unlike the previous version where we had the stabilizing lines on the gin pole, uh, 
uh, this system doesn't need it, and therefore the gin pole is much easier to put on the mast. We just uh, use the pin. Again, the pin that's being taken out right now is the pivot pin, uh, the front pivot pin for the mast step. And, uh, and we can install that then in the holes uh, in the mast. This is really a tight fit right now. Uh, I suspect that after it's used for a while, it may loosen up a little bit uh, as the holes elongate just a bit. But you're going to want to use a hammer to tap this pin through. Um, I did find in subsequent attempts that the pin did go in a little easier when starting from the port side of the boat and uh, installing it that way. We're going to double check and make sure that our backstay is clear, that all of our cables are clear, and, and here we're going to tighten up the mass support lines. And what we're going to do is loosen the rudder fitting so that the rudder can turn a little bit and the mass can lean off to the port side of the boat. We can tighten up the port side stabilizing line, tie that off, and then pull the mast to the starboard side and get these lines really nice and tight. Now we're moving the mast off to the starboard side. The port side line is extremely tight right now and we're going to tie the starboard side tight so that when we center the mast again both lines are tight and it keeps the mast from moving from side to side as the as the gin pole starts to haul it up. Now we're going to take our gin pole up haul line, whatever we want to call it. We're going to run it underneath the shrouds and, uh, and I should have run it underneath the mast stabilizing line as well. You can see the line is going over it underneath the shrouds as it should, but I should have gone underneath the other line also. It doesn't prevent the mass from going up, but it would run a little better if it were on the inside of everything. The initial pull is fairly substantial. Got to lean into it a little bit. And uh, if the mast wants to move one way or the other, you can just grab the, the five to one lines right behind my right shoulder and move it either way a little bit if you need to center it. In the video of making it look this look fairly easy, it's still a pretty substantial pull. I would say there's probably 30 to 50 pounds of pull required, and uh, and using a winch handle on the winch and having someone turn that would most likely make it a lot easier. Uh, the backstay is currently caught on the tiller, so we've got to ease it down a little bit and clear that, and then we can finish up. From this point it would be time to take off the bungee cords holding the furler system and attach the furler as the forestay and finish rigging the boat. Once that's done, the gin pole assembly can be removed. The pin that's holding the gin pole to the mast can be installed uh, at the mast step and the boat can fin be finished uh, getting rigged and ready for sale.
to take the mast down, again, we're going to have to uh, get the gin pole out, install the pin, which I was pointing at, so that the gin pole is now in a horizontal position, attach the side mast support lines, uh, get the gin pole all set up, remove the furler slash halyard or forestay, and make sure that our uh, side lines are snug and we're ready to start to lower the mast. Very little tension is required uh, to control the mast while it's lowering, so you really don't need any wraps on the winch. It's more of a problem. And you actually have to uh, pull on the system to get the mast to start moving. It won't drop by itself unless you're in some kind of gale, I would imagine. Again, on the way down, if the mast isn't centered exactly right, you can just uh, grab the 5 to 1 advantage lines behind my right shoulder or the gin pole itself, as you see in the video, and uh, move the mast left to right just by pulling those lines lightly. Uh, you should be able to easily center the mast in the track uh, with very little effort at all. You can see I'm doing this with one hand. There are no wraps on the winch, and, uh, and it's pretty easy to do. For trailering, we're going to uh, remove the gin pole from the mast, but we're going to leave all the other lines attached. And uh, this way, when it's time to step the mast, it's extremely easy to do. I'm going to demonstrate that procedure here. First, we're going to remove the pin that's supporting the gin pole, holding the gin pole into the mast. Again, that's the front pivot pin. You can see the gin pole just slips off. We'll end up moving the butt of the gin pole towards the top of the mast for stowage. Here I'm probably doing this a little bit in the wrong order. I'm bungeeing the gin pole and furler to the mast. But the first thing before that would be to loosen the mast supporting lines. Um, in order to get the mast to roll all the way forward where it needs to be, those lines need to be slacked about six inches. You're going to see me do that in just a moment, but it's easier to do that before you strap the gin pole to the mast. can see that I've loosened these mass supporting lines uh, about four to six inches. I did retie them and uh, now the mast is ready to pull the pin 
and move it into its tra trailering position. And there you have it, ready to bunch you the rest of the lines on and make the boat ready for trailering.